Welcome to Lecture Three of Networks, Friends, Money, and Bytes. In today's lecture, we will continue to talk about Google, but this time how Google rank web pages. In the last lecture, we talked about how Google auctions the advertising slots, usually on the right panel of the search results. And today, we'll talk about how Google ranks the web pages displayed. In the main panel of the search result page, and we will see that the algorithm that Google uses to rank these web pages can be viewed as the solution to a gigantic system of linear equations. So, while in this lecture we'll start using some linear algebra and matrix notation to accelerate the presentation, you should know that at the heart of all these notation. It is just solving linear equations. Now, the idea that links can be embedded in text dates back to at least the middle of last century. But then, in the 1990s, with the introduction of the web in '89, the browser in '1990, and the web portal in '94, this vision of linking text. Grew to a gigantic scale. Now we can view these web pages as a network. They form a network of information represented as web pages. So each node is a web page, and a link is what's called a hyperlink. It connects the text in one web page. To that of another web page, and you go from this page to the other by clicking on that link. Now, as we all know, that web page A points to web page B doesn't mean that B points back to A. So, we have to provide a sense of direction to this link. We call this a directional link, and the resulting graph is called a directed graph. How big is this graph? It is very big. Nobody knows for sure, but it is estimated that n, the number of web pages out there, is somewhere between 40 to 60 billion. At the same time, this graph is also very sparse, meaning that there aren't that many links compared to the number of nodes out there.、Okay. Many of these web pages have very few links pointing in. Or links pointing out. So we're talking about a huge and a sparse graph. It's a very special kind of graph. And the idea is that we will be able to leverage the pattern of connectivity in this graph to calculate what we call the importance score of each node. And in this case, each node is a web page, and the importance score will be used. To rank that page, and what we want to do is to say that let's turn a seemingly circular logic that says important nodes pointing to, say, you, you being a web page, means that you are also important. This argument almost sounds like a cyclic argument. But in fact, we can use that to derive a recursive definition to define an equilibrium. Now, this equilibrium is not the equilibrium of a convergence of an algorithm, like in power control, or the equilibrium of strategic thinking, as in game theory. This is a fixed point equation equilibrium, as we will see in the rest of this lecture. All right. So coming back to this question, how can we quantify the relative importance of different nodes in a graph, or more specifically, in this case, quantify the importance of each web page? We will see later in lecture eight quite a few different ways to quantify the notion of importance of nodes in a graph. In today's lecture, we will look at a specific one used by Google. 
Now there are quite a few intuitions you can think about this. One is to say, well, you want to quantify node importance, right? So maybe I'll just count how many links does this node have. Well, since this is a director graph, which link is directed link, I'll just count how many links point into this node. In this case, there are three links pointing into this node. So we call this the in degree. And the out degree is one because there's just one node, one link pointing out of this node. And the total degree of this node is four. Okay. So this is a simple intuition, as we will see that it's sort of getting on the right track, but it lacks many elements for it to be a useful metric.